good morning and greetings to everyone and chairperson. So I am Siti Asha Jafar from Nagoya University in Japan. And today I would like to um, give a bit of a talk about our research in our lab, which is how excessive elitism can facilitate the evolution of morphology and behavior of artificial creatures with needs. So I would like to start my presentation by briefing about some of the backgrounds of our research. So as we know, the approach to evolve artificial creatures is um, known to have a lot of interest in both scientific and engineering research. So in scientific research, such as the study of evolution and development of artificial creatures, while in engineering related research, they are more interested to show the purpose in robotics and manufacturing. Okay, so therefore, so our interest um, is in evolving artificial creatures by considering several concepts of eco evo -divo that increase the interactions between multi-agents in our environment, um, also in a 3D physically simulated environment. So, however, by having all of these um, various factors, it actually had caused the increase in the evaluation cost to evolve uh, our creature, both in a physical simulation, and this is not negligible. So therefore, um, the reduction of evaluation costs in the evolutionary computation has actually been discussed quite widely. And by adopting a small population size is often used as an ad hoc way to resolve the problem. But it can actually cause premature convergence to happen in the evolution of creatures. So what are the possible solutions to these uh, problems? So by looking at existing studies, so many have implemented elitism in their evolutionary algorithms. So so each of these studies that uh, that I've shown here has modified, uh, have their own modifications of elitisms in their algorithm. So by having these methods, um, the best individuals from one generation are carried over to the next generation unchanged, and which can improve the performance of the algorithm. So however, uh, sorry. The role of elitism in reducing the evaluation costs has not been um, exclusively discussed. So in this study, we propose a simple method that we call excessive elitism, EE method, to increase the size of the population by keeping the evaluation costs small. So why we increase the size of population? Because we want to contribute to prevent the population from premature convergence by having a higher diversity. So we modified elitism in hypernate, which is the uh, evolutionary algorithm used to evolve the genotype of artificial creatures. Okay, so how we apply this method is by succeeding and reusing the fitness values of the elite individuals in subsequent generations. And this method can be used to reduce the evaluation cost if the elite size in the population is in excess. So in this study, we use um, an evolutionary framework of artificial creatures in a 3D multi-agent environment based on Python. So our creature initially consists of um, one rigid body rectangular shaped block that undergoes morphological development by addition of new block by joints and hinge. And the behavior, as you can see, is uh, uh, generated by the movement of the hinge in each of the uh, body, body parts. So we are using hypernit. So hypernit is uh, the evolutionary algorithm commonly used to evolve a more complex uh, neural networks represented by um, CPPN. So this is uh, a little bit more um, into the uh, morphological development of our creature. So using hypernit to evolve the creatures. 
So the genome in each of individuals have their own genome, which is known as the CPBN. So um, at this stage, at the morphological development stage, so the CPBN firstly computes um, the morphological development of creatures by taking the inputs of the coordinates of the blocks and the output is by uh, is the addition of new blocks or not, the length, the, the direction of the hinge, and whether the hinge is fixed or flexible. And after that, after morphological development happens, so the CPPN this time, the same CPPN this time computes the weight connection of the behavior generation network that decides the angle of movement, movement of flexible hinge by considering the input uh, from the radar sensor that is uh, obtained from each of the blocks, the purple node. And so the behavior generation network over here consists of three layers, input, intermediate, and output. So each of these nodes in these layers are taken from the, the actual 3D substrate space. So the output of this network is the angle of the flexible hinge. So by using a simple locomotion task, we conduct experiments to see how our method can affect the evolution of creatures in this environment. So creatures were arranged in a circular, man circular manner surrounding the target cube at the center. And the fitness is the total distance traveled by the creatures. So the excessive elitism method that we apply in the algorithm was proposed by modifying the elitism in hypernit as mentioned before. So which is commonly defined as the best fit individuals in each species will be preserved as is from one generation to the next. And the elite individuals in the original hypernit will be re-evaluated in subsequent generations. So the difference in our method is that the best fit individuals will become elite from the whole population and genotypes will be passed on to the next generation. And the uh, elite individuals will not be re-evaluated. The fitness will not be re-evaluated and carried on and used as their fitness in the next generation. So by doing this, the only ones that needs to be evaluated at each generation are the non-elite individuals, which is a minority when the elite individuals are in excess. So we conducted four cases to test our method. So first we assume a baseline case is BC, which a small population is often uh, used due to the strong limitation of the evaluation cost. And this case may face premature convergence due to a really small population size. So after that, for further investigation, we experimented case EE. So case EE is uh, we increase the population size and we apply our method, which is the excessive elitism method in this case. And after that, we uh, carried out case LP, which is uh, have similar population size to case EE, but we did not apply our method to case LP. And finally, we demonstrate our method in a small population size which is similar to the baseline case. So let's look at the results. So this is the results that we have collected from all of our cases. So the first graph on top shows the average fitness of the population. And the second is the average block number of the creatures. And the last one is the trajectory of the uh, best uh, population from each case. And result shows that. So in case in the baseline case, the fitness is uh, quite low. So it reached around 20 and uh and occur premature convergence. So the fitness increase in case EE when we apply our method has improved very much and reached maximum value of 60 in many trials. And however, the evaluation costs between these two cases are quite similar. So we expect that case EE have a higher diversity due to the larger population size. 
So this had affected the morphological evolution of the creatures as well to be more adaptive and more simple and able to reach the target. And after that, we compare case EE and case LP, where our method is, does, does not apply to case LP. But we maintain the same population size. So we can see that the average fitness of case LP has dropped very low and face premature convergence. And the evaluation cost for this case is also five times larger than case uh, EE due to the larger value of evaluating individuals. And we can see that the creatures are poorly evolved. They have too many body parts and uh, they are unable to reach a target, maybe, uh, maybe due to the congestions. So finally, we conduct case EESP to demonstrate our method in a small population size. So we can see that the fitness has uh, slightly improved from the baseline case. And the evaluation costs also drop about half than in case BC due to the small number of evaluating individuals in this case. So this slide show shows the morphological development of each of the best individuals from each cases. So the distinctive forms of creatures from all of these cases show that different parameter conditions for uh, the cases can induce the evolution of a different morphological development and result in a different behavioral pattern. So we can see that the average number of blocks increased about 10 to 15, which is complex morphologies. And we expect that exist tendency of evolutionary uh, tendency that the individuals with larger number of blocks tend to dominate initially but those individuals were too complicated to evolve, to evolve further to obtain better morphological structures, which has also brought about premature convergence in the cases in, with a small elite size. So instead, our method of excessive elite size has kept the diversity in the population, which allowed the individuals with smaller number of blocks to survive and to evolve their morphology and behavior to be more simple and adaptive. So finally, um, as observed from the previous result, we can see that evolution of creatures performs best in cases that we apply the EE method. So in addition to previous experiment, we want to find the optimal values of elite size and uh, to successfully evolve the creatures in this environment. So we carry out experiments using different values of elite size, but we maintain the evaluating individuals to be 18 based on the previous experiment. So from the results, we can see that the cost has ranged from only 120 to 160, which is not a, a big difference. So we can see that the average of best fitness is the highest in case five, even though the cost is the highest, but the cost difference is not significant from all the other cases. And however, in case six, we expect that this case will be the best, but uh, the average fitness slightly decreased. And we suspect that case six may have extremely large ratio of elite size to evaluating individual size, which potentially leading to premature convergence due to the evolution of only the lowest fitness individuals. So as the conclusion, we propose um, this method to improve the evolution of creatures by increasing the population diversity and enables the population to avoid premature convergence at a small evaluation cost. So additionally, our method uh, shares uh, a little association with the quality diversity approach like MAP Elites, which captures uh, diverse high performing solutions by partitioning the search space. So in this study, EE method, our method demonstrate the simplest means of securing a niche and maintaining diversity within general framework of simple genetic algorithm. So uh, we hope in further investigation, uh, we want to realize the potential of 
our method in a different and a more complex um, environment. So I'm very honored for this opportunity to speak. So thank you so much.